and welcome to today's webcast entitled Marketing Locally on the Internet. My name is Nate and I'll be your event specialist today. If you need technical assistance, please type your inquiry into the tech support box on the left side of your screen and click the send button. If you're disconnected from the webcast, you can log in again using the login instructions provided to you. If you cannot log back in with these instructions, please call support at 866-271-7592. Once again, that number is 866 271 7592. It is now my pleasure to turn the webcast over to Sukin Shaw. Sukin, the floor is yours. Thank you, Nate. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our May webinar with John Arnold. John Arnold is the author of three marketing books in the uh, best selling series for dummies. He's written Web Marketing, All in One Desk Reference for Dummies, Email Marketing, and Mobile Marketing. Um, and John also writes Marketing Tools and Technologies, uh, a column for Entrepreneur Magazine online at entrepreneur.com. John is a uh, small business av advocate with, uh, with, with a ton of digital experience and background. He's, he started his own firm, Avita Marketing, based out of Boulder, Colorado. Um, he's also worked for brands like Coca-Cola, Constant Contact, and is a part of the Mobile Marketing Association. So. We're going to take questions uh, throughout the presentation, and we'll, we'll answer them at the, at the end. Uh, we're also going to try something a little new. We'll also take questions via Twitter. So please use hashtag NSBank, and we'll also take your questions through Twitter. So without any further delay, I'm going to turn it over to John. Thanks so much for joining us this morning, and uh, take it away. Thanks, Sukin, and thanks, everybody, at Nevada State Bank. You guys are great. Uh, not being from Nevada, I don't know what it's like to be a small business there, but I can imagine it's pretty great with all the support that you guys give to the local community out there. And uh, thanks, Casey and Nathan, too, as well, for putting this together. You guys are, are awesome, good marketers in your own right as well. So thanks to all participants for joining here. I'm super excited to be giving you this information this morning. Uh, nothing makes me more excited than marketing locally on the Internet because small businesses – for many years had a hard time competing with those big national brands uh, through online marketing because there's so many um, large brands that are in your area that have that nationwide presence. And now, because the Internet is starting to segment itself into these local pockets, uh, you have opportunities that you never had before to market your local business and use the Internet in, in a real power, powerful way. So I'm super excited about that. Um, and this presentation is going to take you through some of the best ways to do that. Now, I want to start us off with just a little poll here. I want to get an idea of where you guys are at with how you find local businesses. So I want you to just take a moment and think about um, these poll questions that we're about to put up for you. So the question is, what is your first choice when you need to find a local business? So do you use a phone directory? Do you drive around and use your GPS or word of mouth? on the street, uh, reviews on websites or search engines or mobile uh, devices, what, which are the ones that you guys use? So you'll see that poll come up there, and uh, let's see what you guys think. Looks like word of mouth is winning right now, so that's great. Of course, small businesses survive a lot on word of mouth. Uh, search engines, look at that. Wow, everybody uh, likes to to use those search engines. The good news is, everyone, all of these things can be stimulated with the technologies that we're going to talk about today on this webinar. Webinar. So if you use word of mouth to market your business or search engines uh, or mobile applications, mobile devices, uh, all those different things are converging online with, mobile mar with uh, local marketing. So let's just take a look real quick at our agenda. So I'm going to show you, first of all, how to use Google and other search engines uh, to find local prospects for your business. And then we're going to talk about placing locally targeted display ads on thousands of websites. And those two things are very related, uh, and you're going to see how they tie together very well. And then we're going to talk about mobile devices. Mobile devices is a coming trend. A lot of small businesses aren't aware of how quickly this is going to hit you. So I really want to spend some time talking about how mobile is going to be an influence uh, for your business. So let's start off with the uh, search engine. So using search engines to find local prospects, here's a couple of tools and tips for your success. Now I want to start off by just giving you sort of the, the big picture about what is relevant to search engines these days. So
So as you know, if you do any search engine marketing, it looks like a lot of you guys uh, at least use them to find businesses, even if you're not using them to market your business. A lot of people use a keyword. They go to Google or Bing or Yahoo or their favorite search engine. They type in a key phrase, and then Google or that search engine looks to see if your web page is relevant to that key phrase. And the things that that search engine looks at are threefold. First of all, is the organic content relevant to the search phrase? So in other words, is the content on your website really the best choice when it comes to matching the key phrase to your website? So your content on your website has to be relevant. The other thing is, is there a paid listing on the, on the search engine? So you can create a paid listing that will match those key phrases up with your listing. And the third one, and this is the most exciting part, is that now search engines are starting to mix in local results with those search phrases. So you have the opportunity to feature your business in a key phrase or a category where a national brand or a big business uh, maybe had the opportunity to rank higher than you organically before, now you have the opportunity to come in and rank as a local business. So I'm going to show you just real quick how this works. So I'm going to take this Google search page here and uh, I'm going to search for Mexican restaurants because I really like Mexican restaurants. I'd like to get out and eat some tacos for lunch. So you'll see a few things to notice on this page that when I type this into, uh, in this example, Google, first of all, Google knows that I'm sitting here in Boulder, Colorado. And uh, if you didn't know that already, Google does uh, look at your location. And they find that out by looking at your Internet connection, and they can figure out where you're, you're located. So uh, they know I'm in Boulder, Colorado. So we have a couple of different results on this page. First is those organic results that I was talking about. So the top three results there are, are what Google feels are the best match for me based on the search phrase that I used. But you'll notice some other things on this page that are really interesting. The second thing that you're going to notice is those local results are right there on the first page. So these are all local small businesses that popped up with that search phrase, uh, and they're showing up on the map, and they're also showing up in the listings. So there's a couple opportunities for you here to uh, list your business, and uh, Google will go ahead and put your link to your website and your company's name plus the marker on the map. They'll also aggregate some of the ratings and reviews from around the Internet so that there's a sense of whether your business has a good rating or a bad rating for the people searching for that. And ratings and reviews have become very relevant also to people searching online. Uh, so we're going to talk about how you can uh, affect those a little bit. And then there's also this other link called a Places page. And these Places pages are really important. If you don't already have one, Places pages are going to become frequent and familiar destinations for people searching online for local businesses. So you need to make sure you get a hold of your Places page. Um, and how you do that, actually, is you want to uh, click on the page, uh, or you can go to Google.com and click on Business Solutions and go to the place on uh, Google Places uh, link, and you can create your local page. Or if you're already listed on Google, because Google has figured out where you are, you can claim this page, and then you can be the owner verified listing on this page and affect this content. So when people click on that Places page, you're going to see sort of a profile of the business. And what Google's doing with this and other search engines as well is they're going out online and they do what they do best. They aggregate all this information from across the web and put it on one page to make this very highly relevant page for you. So if you're a small business and you, you haven't claimed this page, uh, it may or may not have the correct information or it may not have enough information for people to really understand what your business is all about. So go ahead and claim that page and that will allow you to put in your descriptions of your, of your products and services, correct your address, put different phone numbers in there, make sure that it has the right URL to your website. And most importantly, what I have highlighted here is those ratings and reviews. And Google is a play, great place to start with these ratings and reviews. If you're the type of business that gets a lot of those ratings and reviews, like a, a restaurant or maybe you are um, uh, in construction, the construction business or the repair business or some sort of service business, those ratings and reviews can be really critical. And for other businesses, this is just coming along. But you can find these on your Google Places page because they're aggregated from all over the Internet. And one of the things you can do is click on the places where those ratings are coming from and go take a look at those pages and see if you can then capture and claim all those local pages that have ratings and reviews. Um, so that's a great place, a great resource for your own research 
to go to your own Google Places page and then conduct your own research on where those ratings and reviews and information is coming from. You can also post your own pictures. You can post videos from uh, your YouTube channel if you want to. You can even put coupons in here and special deals for people. And the great thing about those coupons, they actually translate really well to mobile devices. So if somebody finds your local page on a mobile phone and they find that coupon, they can walk right into your store with the mobile coupon and show it to you and get a discount. So there's great things happening here with these local services and local maps. Make sure you go in there and claim those. And by the way, here's one of the best things about it. It is totally free. So I say this a lot to my small business customers. If you get somebody who calls you up and says, hey, I'm going to charge you a whole bunch of money to maintain your Google Places page, just remember before you get into a situation where you're paying a lot of money for that, that this is a free service. So if you don't have the time or you don't want to do it yourself, that's great. You know, maybe you want to pay somebody to do it. Um, but keep in mind that uh, this is something that you can very easily do yourself or have somebody at your company do. So let's look at some of the tactics and strategies that you can do to get your business on the map. So step number one is to claim all existing local listings. So that includes search engine map listings, but also those local review sites. So when you go to your local place, places page listing, click on all of those review sites and go figure out how to claim those pages too. Most of them have a link that you can click where you can claim that page or at least uh, there's a process you can go through to become the owner of that page and the owner of that that content. Um, you also want to create new listings if necessary. So if there's a particular category uh, of local pages or if there's an uh, industry-specific local set of pages, then you want to make sure that you're creating listings on any of those pages as much as possible because not only do people visit those pages, but also because that content is being pulled by the search engines. And if it's not correct or if there's bad reviews or ratings, then that information can be pulled into more important pages on search engines. So step two is to update your business information. So you want to complete your profile on each one of these local listing pages. Make sure that you have the correct information and also uh, put a complete profile together. So pictures and videos and links to social media and descriptions of your business and your hours of operation and, and all that kind of stuff matters to people who are searching for small businesses. So uh, make sure that you have a very robust, very telling profile that shows people your value. And then step number three is ask your customers to review your business. And you can do that by sending them to specific pages or you can just ask them to go online and find their favorite place to write a review or a rating and make sure that they're doing that for you. A lot of people, and I'm sure especially out there in Nevada, there's nice people out there, so you can just ask them to help your business. It really helps you to have those ratings and reviews come in. And a lot of people, just because they like you, they have a great relationship with your small business, they'll go out and do it for you just to be nice and just to kind of give back because you're such a great small business. It's one of the advantages that you have as a small business is to be able to affect uh, those ratings and reviews like that. And uh, the, the ones that are out there that are great, you want to make sure you're involved in those ratings and reviews by responding and encouraging those to continue. And the ones that aren't so great, you also want to be involved and make sure you're doing a little bit of damage control. So if somebody gives you a negative review, make sure that you're in there responding to that review and uh, explaining the situation or maybe offering uh, that customer uh, some additional benefit for returning as a customer uh, or helping them to change their mind about that. So. Be on top of it. It's really, really important. It's a huge trend on search, um, and uh, it's easy to do. All right, so let's take a look at our second area, which is locally targeted display ads. Now, this is, again, a, a pretty exciting place for me to, uh, to talk about with small businesses because really all this is, gang, is banner ads. Banner ads might sound like a very antiquated way to market your, your business, but actually banner ads and targeted display ads have become very sophisticated and they've also become very accessible to small business uh, and they're highly targetable to local geography so I really like these things. Let me show you how they work. So this all starts again with the search engine so I'm going to go to my search engine and this time I'm going to type in skydiving. Never tried it before but it, it looks like a real hoot so I'd like to do some research on it and see if it's safe or see if uh, it's something that I would, would like to do with my kids or whatever I'm going to do with skydiving. So I type that into my search engine and here are my results. Again, remember that first of all, Google knows that I'm in Boulder, Colorado. So it's got results 
and it's also got some of those uh, map results and uh, the local results as well. So let's take a look at one of those local results. Here's a small business. Um, this small business has a listing, and it's listed on the map, and that's a place to possibly buy skydiving services. Um, and you'll see that the other locations are mapped as well on the side. But this is the most interesting listing to me because I'm just getting started in skydiving and I'd like to take a look at what it's all about. So this is actually a content website, not a service that sells skydiving lessons or skydiving equipment. It's a, it's a place where I can go and learn about it. And if I click on that result, what you're going to see is there's opportunities here for small businesses to advertise. Now, in the old days of banner advertising, if you wanted your banner ad to appear on a website like this, you had to actually call this website up and say, you know, I'd like to place an ad in the right-hand column right next to this on this certain page, and what does that cost? Well, all of those days are behind us. That ship has sailed. Now all you have to do is create an ad through an advertising network, and that advertising network automatically helps you to target content and specific users and behavior all across the Internet. So let me show you the model about how that works. So this is the old model. You're advertising, and those uh, happy customers were in between. What's in between those two was the content websites, and you had to actually make physical contact with each one of those content sites. And now these advertising networks have taken that middle position. So you've got all the content publishers there on the left, all the people who write blogs and uh, magazine article websites and news sites and social media sites and all that stuff. All of these millions of content web pages that are out there are now uh, the advertising networks are between the consumers and those sites. And your advertising can be pushed through these networks and pushed out to all those content websites in a really efficient and effective way. So here's how uh, the advantages of that works. So there's literally millions of sites. So and this is exciting, again, for small business, because if you want to place an ad on a web page like Google's first page on a key phrase, there's only a few spots where you can list your ad, and that can get pretty expensive if you're bidding against other people. But there's millions of content websites out there where you can place your ads, and they're very relevant to the people who are clicking on those and, and searching for those things. Uh, there's also very highly targeted content available. So you can target your ads to geography. You can target your ads by the content on the page. So if there's a specific key phrase like skydiving that you want to target, whenever that phrase shows up on a content website somewhere, you can call up those ads and make them display. You can also pay for the clicks instead of the displays. And I really love that idea because when the ad displays, you get some benefit from that. They get to see your logo and your colors and maybe your website address, your phone number, um, pictures and animations, and all that stuff is valuable for building your brand in a local market. And you don't pay for that impression. You only pay if and when they click on the ad. And so that's a benefit that you can uh, maintain traffic to your website and you're paying for actual clicks. Uh, you also have the ability to track your results. You can track those results by which banner ads were the best performers. So was it the best performer in the left column or the right column or a specific website or a specific type of content or a specific location? And all that stuff is very highly trackable. And you can turn those ads on and off based on how they perform. And the final one, and this is one of my, one of my favorites, it's called retargeting. Now retargeting used to be a really sophisticated big business strategy You've probably experienced this before where you go to the website of a big brand and then when you leave the website, it seems like all you see are the ads from that company and it's like they're following you around online. Well, that's not a big business strategy anymore. Now that has been brought back to small business. So you actually can um, put a little bit, bit of code on your website and when someone visits your site, when they leave the site, they will see a higher incidence of your ads because they've already visited your site. Uh, you can also get really sophisticated with these and target specific pages on your website. So if you want everyone who comes to the skydiving equipment page on your website to see advertisements for the specific piece of equipment they were looking at, you could actually do that and make sure that the ads they see are 
completely relevant to their last touch on that page. So really great sophisticated stuff and now really accessible as well to small business. Um, so here's how you can get this to work for you. Now, Google uh, launched a display network as part of Google AdWords. So if you're already placing pay-per-click ads online, look for this in your AdWords account. You can go in and choose the display network. Now, I've been in there and I've seen some of the templates. They're up and coming. Not all of them are super um, uh, friendly to use, and, and some of them are a little, frankly, ugly. And you've got you to gotta have a graphic designer go in there and make them pretty for you. So, uh, but it is an option if you already have a, a Google AdWords account to start running display ads throughout the Google Display Network. And those will keep your ads on Google Sites, so anybody who's selling their space to Google is a candidate for those uh, sites to appear, or those ads to appear. Uh, Bing is another option. You can go to advertising.microsoft.com, and they are starting to get into the display ads and also uh, a pretty big move into the mobile stuff. So if you'd like to be on mobile sites, uh, the Microsoft folks are in, into that. And also Yahoo, advertisingcentral.yahoo.com. It's another big network of Yahoo sites like Yahoo Mail, Yahoo Small Business, Yahoo Answers, Yahoo Directories, Yahoo Local. All those Yahoo properties are places where you can pl uh, place these display ads. Uh, if you'd like to use a customized advertising tool, uh, then I have one I'd like you guys to uh, try out. And it's at mydisplayadvertising.com. But you have to be set up with an advertiser account in order to do that. If you'd like to do that, I'm happy to uh, show you how that works. Just give me a call, contact me on my website, and I'll give you guys access to uh, that platform so you can poke around in there and, and have some fun with it. All right, now moving on to number three, way that you can market yourself locally online, mobile devices. Uh, mobile devices include smartphones, feature phones, and now tablets like the iPad, and they are literally flooding the market gang. So these things are coming and coming strong. Uh, in fact, I want to give you guys another quick little poll here, and uh, let's just take a poll. How many mobile devices do you have in your household? Look at that. It looks like uh, there's a couple, two, three, four or more. Let me tell you what's going on across the United States. 96% of the American population has a mobile device. So it's not everybody yet, but holy cow, 96%. And globally, gang, there are more mobile devices on the face of the earth than televisions and computers combined. So talk about something that can have an impact on the way we market our businesses. Uh, what did television do for marketing, and what did the computer do for marketing? It, it changed the way we market to people. Now mobile devices are here, and they're coming on really strong, especially with smartphones. So it's about a third of the American consumers have smartphones now, and so uh, those are giving us access to all kinds of different ways to market our businesses. So here's what that model looks like. These are all of the available mobile paths that you can use to market your small business. And I put them into three categories. There's communication, content, and commerce. So communication are just different ways that you can reach people on their mobile devices. You can use mobile email, text messaging, and even voice to do that. And then there's mobile content, things like the mobile internet and applications. And there's also ways to deliver content through technologies like Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and connecting to the internet that way. And then we also have mobile commerce, and those are things like uh, premium SMS where you charge people for the, the text messages, or even mobile payment where the mobile device becomes the mobile wallet or the credit card. Uh, there's a technology called uh, NFC, Near Field Communications, that's very popular in Europe right now. It's coming to the U.S. Uh, where you can actually take your phone and hold it up near the, uh, the payment platform, and it will charge for the uh, whatever the service or the product is, it will charge it right to your cell phone. So uh, it's like you have this little mobile wallet walking around. So I want to walk you through some of these because I know for a lot of small business owners, this is sort of foreign territory for you, but it's important enough that you really need to take a look at it. So let's start with text messaging, also known as SMS or short message service. So what you can do with this is this is just text messaging. And it's real simple to do. In fact, it's one of the first places where you should make uh, uh, your first step into mobile marketing. 
So uh, you, you have to get what's called a common short code. It's just a little short phone number and a keyword, and you can get those through your text messaging provider. And there's a lot of them out there that, that are friendly for small business. So you can do your own search and figure out who does text messaging services for you. And they'll give you a short code and they'll give you a keyword. And what you want to do is you just want to advertise that in all of the places uh, that we call points of interest. So points of interest is any local geography where you can put a mobile call to action. It could be uh, in your store. It could be on a billboard. It could be in a print ad. It could be on your website. So anywhere where there's a point of interest, you can say, text my keyword to my short code, and you can get something, a coupon or special messages delivered or incentives. So you want to try to use, it's just like email marketing, you want to use opt-in incentives. So give people a reason to do it. They're either going to get a discount or they're going to get special uh, messages, and those will be delivered to their, to their mobile device. And the benefit of that is that they can actually use their mobile device to execute on the coupon. So if you send them a coupon with a coupon code, they can walk right up to you and show it to you and say, hey, I got the text and I'd like the deal. Um, so you want to develop uh, some, some coupons that, will, that are able to be shown on the phone, and that's the most powerful part of this for local marketing. Now, uh, also, you want to try to deliver location-relevant content. So one of the things about getting texts from people is uh, you can use that mobile device to figure out where they are when they're receiving these texts. And so um, you want to deliver location-relevant content. If you know that somebody is uh, in a certain part of town or lives in a certain part of town where you have a location, you can deliver location-relevant information to them. So give them a coupon for the store that's nearest to them uh, and that kind of stuff. So there's another similar technology called MMS, or multimedia messaging, and there are providers out there for this as well. It's just like SMS, only you can have thousands of text characters. You can have images, audio, animations, and videos. So this is just like uh, text messaging on steroids, if you will, and it has way more features and way more rich functionality for, uh, for the user. So same thing applies here. You can use this to deliver mobile greeting cards and mobile greetings and presentations and all kinds of stuff, um, but it's just like SMS. It's not available on every single phone, but every phone that has a camera in it is capable of receiving an MMS message. So it's most phones out there. Um, you do have to watch out a little bit for this one because they can be more expensive, not only for you than a, t uh, than a text message, but also for your customer. Your customer may or may not have an unlimited data plan, and they may not be able to receive unlimited MMS messages. So just check with your provider uh, and check with some of your customers to see if they are willing and, and uh, able to receive these MMS messages. Another great option is mobile email. Now, a lot of you may have heard somebody out there or a lot of the blogosphere saying things like email marketing is dead. Well, let me tell you something. It is not dead. It is still the number one most preferred way for consumers to stay in touch with businesses. So keep the emails going out, keep the email list building, and realize that email is about to be transformed into an even more powerful marketing tool because of the mobile device. So a lot of people are checking their emails on their mobiles. A lot of people are using their mobile to show an email or to uh, act on an email. So what you want to do is uh, you can collect email addresses through the mobile device. So you can ask customers if you have a text messaging provider, you can ask your customers to text you their email address to join your email list. And that's a real handy way for them to uh, instantly join the email list and get on the list. Uh, you can also provide links in your emails to mobile content. And that's really important if they're reading their email on their mobile and they click on a link, you want that web page that they land on to be optimized for mobile devices. Uh, so you can do that with a, a mobile service provider that does mobile, uh, mobile websites, and we'll talk about that in just a second. Uh, and also you can ask those customers to show the email, and that's a, a super powerful way to use it. No more going to your printer and printing out the coupon and uh, getting in the car and driving down with the printed out piece of paper. You can just use that uh, mobile device to show the coupon and get the discount. And there's even some mobile barcode technology coming out now. Uh, it's a little expensive for small businesses now, but it's coming pretty soon, where you can put a barcode in that mobile email, and then they can use their mobile screen to scan the code, and then you can do some tracking at the point of sale. So that's coming, too. It's just a little expensive right now for those small businesses, but uh, look out for it. Mobile Internet is another way that you can use uh, this technology. 
So those are just websites accessed through a mobile device. So what you want to do is, again, promote your mobile site URL at all points of interest. A real popular one for this is to create a little mini site. Maybe it's just one page, one mobile web page for one of your products. And that way, when somebody is standing in your store and they'd like more information, they can just go to that uh, simple URL, or they can even scan a code like the one you see on the slide right there. Uh, they can scan that code, and that will take them to the page where they can get more information about the product. And the great thing about that is not only do you give them access to more information and pictures and videos and, and stuff like that, but once they've scanned that code, they walk away with access to that web page and it's on their mobile. So when they go back and get in the car and they have some downtime somewhere and they want to go back and look at that product again and read all that information, there it is right there in their pocket and they can pull it out. Um, so uh, you can also use maps in this way. So if you'd like somebody to click a, a barcode or go to a URL to instantly find your business and get driving directions, it's another great use for the mobile Internet. Another path is mobile applications. So this is for the iPhone users and the Android phone users, and to some degree now the Windows phone users and the BlackBerry users also have mobile apps. Uh, so these are just little programs designed to work with the operating system on the phones. So you can do some great local marketing with these. You can offer downloads through the app stores or the mobile sites. So if you have something uh, of, of value that you provide as a service and you can be you can enhance that through an application that runs on the phone. Not only does that improve your customer service and the, the way that you pull customers in, but it also puts your brand right in front of them every time they use that app, and that can help with recall and, and establishing your company's brand. You can also push content through your applications. So if you have special announcements or if you have advertisements or promotions, uh, when people are in those apps, you can uh, develop the apps to have a placeholder for content and advertising that you push through those apps. Uh, you can also use apps to reward loyalty and uh, entertain people or improve their productivity. Uh, the loyalty apps are some of my favorites. In fact, uh, there's a few out there that you don't even have to build yourself. One of them is called Foursquare, where people can check in to a specific location and actually earn rewards and discounts for that. So go check out Foursquare if you're not already a member and you do have a physical location where people check in, can check in. Um, you can set up rewards for those those people who check in. So, for example, let's say you set up 50% uh, off anybody who checks in three times in 30 days or something like that. So there's lots of really great ways you can use those existing applications that people are already using. Uh, in fact, you're starting to see Facebook and some of the other social media tools allowing check-ins. Uh, they don't allow rewarding check-ins yet, but I'm sure that's coming right away because uh, Foursquare was one of the ones to really – see that as an opportunity for small businesses and implement that into their tools. So if it was successful for them, I'm sure some of these others uh, will also follow suit. Uh, voice, another uh, thing to remember is that mobile devices are phones. And so uh, I know a lot of small businesses, you guys hide your, your phone number on your website or you, you don't make your phone number prominent. But let me tell you, with everyone walking around with a mobile device, sometimes it's easier to just press a phone number, uh, touch the phone number on the screen, or dial that number and get instant information. So you can do that two ways. What's really great about mobile is that there's technology behind the call as well. So uh, besides being able to touch the phone number and have a live person answer that, you can also use what's called interactive voice response, or IVR systems, to answer the calls. Uh, or to deliver calls to mobile devices as well. So imagine someone standing in your store and there's a little phone number on there that says dial this number and press 1 to hear product information. And they dial the number, they press 1, and that IVR system can answer that call and deliver that information and walk them through next steps for uh, ordering that product or for signing up for an email list or you know whatever the next step is for that. And it can all be handled automatically. Another opportunity for you guys is mobile content. So those are things like videos, uh, streaming videos or downloadable videos or sound enabled on a mobile. So these days, all these smartphones are multimedia capable. So they can display those, uh, those videos and, and do a great job. So uh, again, you can use a mobile barcode or you can use a URL or you can send people to your YouTube channel 
and they can download and watch all these great uh, videos or content, streaming content or audio files that you can put online. So to make that location specific, you just promote that content at all those points of interest. So again, someone's standing in front of your product or in front of your store, and you can give them uh, a mobile uh, action where they can watch the video before they decide to, pr to buy that product. Um, and the next one, mobile advertising. So mobile advertising is simply advertising through all of these other mobile channels. So it's placing those paid promotional uh, messages. You can place them uh, through mobile advertising networks, and those work similar to how our display advertising work that we just showed you previously. Uh, you can also use uh, location-specific ad copy. So remember, the mobile device is location aware. So you can actually put mobile advertisements that tell people, uh, hey, John in Boulder, uh, we'd like you to come visit our location that's right down the street from you uh, because we noticed that you were searching from downtown Boulder. Uh, so that location-relevant content is super easy to do now with the mobile device being so uh, location aware. And another one, mobile commerce. So that's enacting a transaction through a mobile device. Those are things like mobile payments, mobile giving. You can do mobile gift cards now. Hey, gang, forget about the punch card that you know, the customer always forgets to bring in with them and you have to create a new one and uh, you know, you're punching those punches out and you have to find a special puncher because they can cheat and use a punch thing or whatever or you sign the initials on it or whatever. Uh, all of those punch card things are going to get replaced by mobile devices. Now again, it's a little bit expensive now to run a mobile gift card program uh, on your phone today but not too long from now it's going to be very accessible to small business. So uh, look for those providers to pop up and start giving you a call and take a look at it. They work really well. If you want to try one out, try the Starbucks gift card. Um, it's, it's really fun to use. And actually, uh, you know, these guys are still getting used to it, too. And in fact, I had to show one of the clerks at Starbucks how to use it one day because they didn't know how it worked. But it's real cool. You just uh, scan the, the scanned, uh, uh, screen of your, of your mobile, and it deducts the loyalty points, and it keeps track of your account. It's all really succinct, and you don't have to Remember that punch card or that gift card. It's all right there on the, on the mobile. And finally, uh, we have what's called capabilities and enablers. So another neat uh, feature of mobile devices is they have all these built-in functions like a camera uh, so people can snap pictures of things. And you can think of all kinds of creative ways to leverage that in a local environment. So if you're salespeople, for example, you know, are working with somebody and you can't get them to buy the thing but they're still thinking about it, have them snap a few pictures of it to bring home with them so they'll remember that experience and they can look at it when they're discussing it with their spouse. You know, hey, look, this is, this is what it looked like. Do you remember you know, our experience there at the store? So all those different things with a camera are really exciting. Um, there's also cool things like an accelerometer and a gyroscope and Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, and all those things are, uh, you know, not as so much relevant to what you guys are doing as small businesses, business owners, but that technology being there is going to enable all kinds of really neat technologies that will help you with marketing. For example, one of them is called virtual reality. You may have heard of this, and what that is is you hold your phone up to the street, and as you pan around and look at the screen, the camera uh, captures the, the images of the street and then because there's an accelerometer and a gyroscope in, and a GPS inside the phone, um, it can show you what's inside the building. So you can see that you know, there's a coffee shop in there and there's a sandwich shop in there and there's an insurance guy in there and there's a, you know, somebody selling something over there, uh, watches or something. So you can scan across and, and see where you are, and that's a, it's a really cool feature. Again, it's coming. It's not quite here yet. Um, but that's another reason to bring you all the way back to the beginning of this presentation and make sure that your business is prominently featured on all of those mapping sites because where do you think that data is going to come from when somebody holds their phone up and wants to know what's in that building? That information is going to come from those search engine maps that have the information, and it's up to you to make sure that that is all correct. So here's a summary of all that mobile stuff. I know that was a lot of information in a short period of time for you, but hopefully it's getting you uh, excited about the coming mobile wave. Um, here's the summary of what you can do. I would start with just some simple mobile campaigns. So first you want to list your business on all those online maps because that's where the information is going to come from to get you onto mobile screens. Um, and then you want to include maps on your websites because when people browse to your website and they're on a mobile, a lot of the time they're looking for where are you located and how can I contact you. 
So make sure you have that map page with a phone number that they can touch and uh, directions that they can touch on uh, and, and find your location. And then you want to place those mobile calls to action at all points of interest that you can think of. So that would be your text messaging opt-in call to action, your mobile website URL or a barcode that you can uh, point at a video or a, a mobile site. You might want to have written instructions. So for example, take a picture of this product and walk up to the counter and that will, that's how we're going to uh, go fulfill the order for you. Uh, and then there's also personal interaction. So if you have salespeople on the floor or if you're the salesperson on the floor uh, of your office or your location, uh, then you can you know, think of all the different ways that person can use that mobile device to enact a transaction. All right, so we come to the end, and we want to take a bunch of questions now and answer these. Uh, before I do that, though, I just want to tell you that I, you know, thank you for, for joining me here. If you want to continue the conversation, uh, what I'd like you to do is go to my website and subscribe. It's totally free. Uh, you just go to johnarnold.com and click on subscribe. And I will also send you, if you do that, uh, one chapter of mobile marketing for dummies. So you can start to get your, your mind wrapped around how this mobile thing works and how this location stuff can tie into mobile. So that's johnarnold.com. Click on subscribe. It's totally free. And I hope you'll join me. And that way you can uh, continue getting some of these resources from me. And Sukhan, I'm going to pass it back to you and uh, help, uh, so you can help me moderate some of these questions that are coming in. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, John. Let's uh, let's look at some questions. Um, a couple of people had uh, ha have expressed that you know what you covered is is great. A lot of detail, a lot of exciting things. Uh, they feel a little bit overwhelmed. So how do you, you know, what do you recommend to to a small business owner or someone to sort of help them get started? What are maybe the first few things that they could do, the easy things that they could do, kind of quickly to help get their presence locally uh, on the search engine and things like that. Yeah, definitely a, a great question. Um, first thing you want to do is realize that you don't have to do everything. So as a small business, you can probably rely on one or two different things to get, get you started uh, and then you know, become proficient at that before you move on to something else. So for starters, let's look at what you're already doing and see how you can translate that into something locally targeted. So a lot of you guys are doing email, for example. So email marketing uh, can, can become more local by maybe segmenting your list by location. So instead of sending everything to everybody, maybe you want to divide your list into two or three parts based on location. So the people who live up north, uh, maybe you put a little bit different information in there than the people who live down south. Uh, so that's one way to take it is take what you're already doing and try to target it for location. If you've already got uh, some things that you're doing that, and, and you're, already, you're already aware of that, then you want to start something new, then I would start with search engines because search engines, as we uh, found in the poll, it, you, know, you guys are just like everybody else. Uh, most people go to the search engine when they want to find a local business. So start with that local Google Places page. Start with making sure that your listing is correct, that your map location is correct, Sometimes they're off by a block or two, and that can make a big difference. Um, so go in there and claim those pages and start working that local page, and that's where I would begin. Uh, a couple other questions related to sort of budgeting and how you, how you can get started. Um, as you mentioned, some of this stuff is free. Uh, what, what do you recommend for sort of startups and companies that are just you know, maybe cash-strapped or sort of uh, bringing themselves up by the bootstraps? What, 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 what do you recommend to get started? Yeah, so uh, you know, it's an interesting question. Every, everybody's cash strapped, and, and uh, a lot of these things are free, and that's great. Uh, and but you're also strapped for time as well, right? So it's not just always about the money, but it's also about having enough time to do that. So what I would say is, is uh, you know, do your homework and learn how to do this stuff first. If you're a do-it-yourselfer, so a lot of people kind of uh, learn tr learn by trial by fire. You know, you go in there and you get started right away, and you do everything. And, uh, and then you get stuck and then you forget about it and you have a half-created profile or, or you didn't get all the way through it. So if you're going to be a do-it-yourselfer, then uh, you know, get a resource that's going to help you to get it done. And that would be a book or a CD or something like that that, that will walk you through how to do it. Um, if you're not the, a do-it-yourselfer and you're cash-strapped, uh, then what I would recommend is that you find a local business who does this stuff for you um, and find one who is willing to set it up for you and give it back to you. So I see a lot of these people will um, take control of your places listing, for example, and they won't give you the logins and they don't 
let you control the content. I wouldn't go with one of those. You'll get better bang for the buck in the long term if you pay to have it set up for you in the first place and have it handed off to you so that you can run it yourself after the fact. And that can save you some time up front uh, getting over the learning curve, and then you can manage it yourself afterwards. Excellent. What, what do you recommend for um, maybe monitoring tools so that you can help monitor sort of your reputation maybe? Because, you know, there's, there's Google Places, there's Yelp, there's Foursquare. Do you, you know, what could you use to monitor all these sites without having to go to them every single day? Yeah, you can actually uh, find some great tools online. There are, there are free tools for that, and there are paid tools for that. Um, Google has a great one, so if you want to go to Google, you can sign up to have Google uh, go out online and monitor every place where your brand is mentioned, for example. And that works if you have a unique brand. So if you have some, you know, if your name is John Arnold, it's a little tougher because there's so many John Arnolds out there, so you can't monitor your brand that way. But if you have a brand that's uh, easy to monitor, then there's tons of tools out there. A lot of them are free. Uh, what they do is they go out and find, just like what Google does, they go out and find all the mentions that you have of your brand or your product and they aggregate them all to one page so you can quickly scan through those uh, and figure out what's being said about you. Uh, a question, another question from James. Um, he said, reviews are great for businesses that sell maybe a product or some sort of a widget or maybe even restaurants, but um, he's saying it doesn't really seem relevant to high-end service-related businesses. Um, you know, care to elaborate or care to talk about how actually this could apply to high-end businesses? Yeah, I'd say it applies to everybody, and here's why. This is what I'm noticing with behavior across the Internet uh, and the way that it's changed. So let's say five years ago, maybe longer, uh, people would rely on expert reviews to decide what to buy. So, for example, you had Siskel and Ebert, and they would tell you which movie to go watch, right? And they were the experts, and that's who you trusted. And now that's completely shifted, and what you have is people go online, and if they see a comment or a rating or a five stars or a three stars – or, or review about something, it could be a total stranger, and their name isn't even on there, it's somebody's username, and they're willing to trust that, and they trust that even more in some cases than the expert review. And so I would say if your business is a business that gets ratings and reviews at all online, uh, then you're, it's going to have an impact. Uh, and also keep in mind that it's not just the strangers doing the reviews uh, where I'm seeing this trend but it's also friends recommending to other friends, and that's why social media has such an impact in this realm too because if you make it easy for people to share the, the great benefits of your business with their friends, then it's easier for them to make referrals and uh, connect with other people about it. So people trust their friends, and they also trust the strangers. So I'd have to say, um, you know, unless you're not getting any reviews because people don't review your products, uh, it, it matters a lot. Uh, so, so you just mentioned you know social media and with the with the growth with the growth of Facebook and Twitter and all of these different tools, um, do you see those sites um, as better advertising channels than the Yahoos and the Googles? Uh, do you do you see the social media sort of taking over the role of uh, of search engines? Yeah, you know, social media is another funny one to me. I love how things come come around, come back around. Uh, you know. Fifteen years ago or so, uh, if you wanted to get on the Internet, you had to go through AOL or Prodigy or CompuServe or something like that. And, and that was the Internet. And the way that they differentiated themselves was by the different services that they offered. So you went, you went to AOL and they had you could check your stock quotes every 15 minutes. And back then that was really fast. So, wow, I'm going to go and get that content, get access to that content. And when the whole Internet opened up uh, and we had the search engine era, uh, you know, you had to search through millions and millions of websites to find what you need. And now it's all coming back to this other model of, uh, you know, everything's kind of on Facebook for people who want to be social and have their friends, and you have these little silos happening. So I don't think it's going to take over and become the new norm, but it certainly is interesting that you can focus your marketing efforts on these little groups. Uh, you know, we didn't talk about Facebook today, but it is a fantastic local marketing tool uh, for this reason. Number one, people enter their location into their profile when they create a Facebook profile. So if you want to advertise to everybody in Boulder, Colorado, you can do that through Facebook's advertising platform by just selecting all the people. Uh, it's really neat if you use it, too, because it will show you how many people uh, are in the target audience that you're creating for your ads. Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's a really interesting way to get marketing to a local place. Um, 
it, is it better than anything else that's out there, like local display ads or anything else? No, it's just a piece, another piece of the puzzle, another opportunity for you to uh, give that a try and see if that's the place where your business is going to get the best return. Uh, by the way, you also, folks, I didn't mention this, but uh, you can do a local Google business page, or uh, I mean a Facebook business page. So if you have a national, you know, one-size-fits-all Facebook business page, uh, go take a look at making that local instead, and you can target a local geography for that. And sometimes those have advantages for a small business over having a page that anyone can be a friend of. Excellent. Uh, so a couple more, a couple more people asked this the same question, and maybe you can touch upon it again. But um, you know, everyone, everyone's comparing sort of selling services versus selling products, and how reviews play a role in in those two. I mean, if you want to just touch upon how. I think that you know they're they're both important. Uh, the reviews matter both to services and both to the products. Yeah, the the difference really with that in my mind is that a lot of people who review the service is really a reflection on your business, much more so than someone who reviews a product, unless you have a proprietary product. So, for example, if you're a retailer and you sell, um, you know, a, a product that everybody else sells too then that has much less of an impact. It, a product review has much less of an impact on you than someone who reviews a service that's really reflecting your business. Uh, so it would be a great idea as, uh, as a small business who sells products to try to distance your business from the product reviews. So you may want to have uh, reviews for specific products on your website as opposed to having a global category where it's you know, all the negative and positives about everything happens on, on one page. Whereas if you have a service, it's just harder for you to do that because uh, in many cases with small business, you are the service uh, provider. So it makes it a little more difficult to distance yourself from those ratings and reviews. So you probably have to be more involved in them. All right. Well, I think that's uh, pretty much all the time we have. If you want to head on over to the next slide there, we'll, uh, we'll wrap things up for everyone. Um, just for the audience, you know, this webinar will be on demand at nevadasmallbusiness.com uh, starting probably in the next couple of business days. And then coming up on June 14th, uh, we are going to have author Stephen S. Little. He's going to talk about sort of the duck and recover, uh, the embattled business owner's guide to survival and growth. Uh, we're going to talk about, you know, he's going to talk about how to fill market gaps, how to really take advantage of what's happened in the economy. Uh, maybe looking at joint ventures for your business, um, maybe looking at strategic partnerships and really how you can focus your business efforts now to get the most out of uh, what's been happening. So that's coming up on June 14th, and you can actually go register for it right now at nsbank.com slash web event. So we just want to thank everyone for today's participation, and especially John Arnold. Thank you so much for a wonderful presentation. Um, and we'll, we, you know, if you have any other questions, you can post them to nevadasmallbusiness.com, and we'll get them over to John and get them answered for you. Thanks, and have a great rest of your day. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That does conclude our meeting for today. Thank you for your questions and your participation. You may now disconnect.